So, welcome to Kika Media Engineering demo session number two. In this session, we're going to use the Flash Author environment to make the assets for a memory game. We'll start this off. Uh, first, let me apologize that my cursor doesn't appear in the screencast. I'll try and highlight things and uh, let the little tooltips pop up as much as possible so you can see what I'm doing. The first thing we'll want to do is open up a new file, see Create New Flash Action Script 3.0. You get the new document window with your timeline at the top, your stage, properties usually at the bottom, library usually in the bottom right. With this application, we're going to have a series of different screens that the user will see. There'll be a start screen, a help screen, a game screen, and a high score screen. And we're going to want to throw each of these screens on their own layer. So if you look up at the uh, time bar up here at the top, on the lower left area of the timeline, there's an insert layer button. Hit that three times to get a total of four layers. And if you want to rename these layers, you simply double click on them and you can change the name. Let's start, start screen, help screen, high score screen. and game screen. Alright, now while we have an open stage here without anything else selected you can see that our properties menu down here is showing the properties for the stage which will actually be the size the, the screen space of the final application. Right now that's set to 550 by 400 which is fairly standard. If we click on that we can change it to whatever we want set things like background color and frame rate right in this little window or if you look just to the right of that button you have the background color and the frame rate over here right now it's at 12 frames put it up to 24 it's important to keep the number of frames per second that you're using in mind especially for animations that you want to last a certain amount of time you're going to need 24 frames of animation to last one second at 24 frames per second fairly straightforward uh, up here we can change the zoom so I can see a bit more of the stage. That's fine. Now, the first thing we're going to want is to make a logo that will appear in each of our screens and sort of tie this application together. It doesn't matter which layer we're on when we start that because we'll actually just right click in the library and hit new symbol. We'll call this game logo or memory logo memory logo and make sure that that's a movie clip hit OK. Now if you look on this uh, top of the stage you'll see that we're in scene number one and memory logo which means any editing that we do now is inside of that symbol. So let's just take a text tool and make ourselves a little window and write memory and uh, that's a you know, pretty boring looking font so let's go down here into the properties tab again and check out the font and switch that down to something a bit more interesting. Uh, sure, why not? Now we see that it's really small right beside the uh, font. We can increase the size with the slider here. Great. And let's just adjust the spacing. We call that the kerning. Right beneath the font you see the AV with the little arrows and there's a slider here. That's the spacing between the letters. You can make it really big or really small. Let's bring it about here so you can still read it. That's fine. The color is still a bit boring, so we can go uh, to the right of the font and grab that fill color, and let's just make it a sort of an orange. Done. Now, let's say we wanted to change the color of, say, the exclamation mark, just to give it a bit more impact. We'll change that to red. We notice that the whole text field has changed. We're using input text, switch that over to static text, and then we'll try switching the memory back to that orange color. And then you can change them independently. That's great. Let's uh, add something else to our logo here. We still have this big text field, which we can shrink down a little bit by just grabbing that and sliding it while we have our text tool selected so we don't waste any more space. 
and then we'll just make another one here just an exclamation mark make that another different color sort of a lighter yellowy orange like so and again shrink that down so it doesn't waste any space then I'll go over here to the free transform tool which you can apparently get to by pressing Q unless you change your uh, settings and now it becomes important that you can't see my cursor but if you hold the cursor just off the corner you get a rotate icon it's a curly arrow and you can spin this around if you hold over one of the black squares you can resize let's just do that like so and like so maybe a little bit more this way and <clears throat> by clicking in the middle you can move it rotate it around a little bit like so and that's a bit big so we'll just shrink it back down and put it in a nice spot there great now we have this underline exclamation point sitting on top of our um, memory so we'll just arrange that and send it to back. Now it's underneath, everything's cool. This is done all inside of our memory logo uh, symbol. So we can just go back to scene one or stage and you notice there's nothing there. Let's start by making the start screen. We're also going to want to make this as a mem movie clip. So go new symbol, movie clip, and call it start screen. Actually, I'll call it MC start screen just to keep things clear. Now, what we're going to want here is a square or a rectangle that's the same size as our background. So I can just draw a little one, select it, and in the properties tab, make it 550 by 400, which is the size of our stage and put its registration point with these XY boxes at zero by zero. So when we put it on the stage, we'll have the top left corner of it selected. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting. Again, with this box selected, go over here to the color tab and let's change the type, the fill style from solid down to a linear, which will be a linear gradient. Now you see here these little sliders on the uh, gradient bar. You can use them to change the color that you're seeing. Let's just start with a really dark green and go to a little bit lighter green. A little bit lighter than that. Sure, that looks fine. Now, of course, if you want more of one color or the other, you can use these sliders. So if I slide this way over here, then the gradient happens between the two sliders. So you get about half the screen is the dark green, and then the other half is the gradient. You can even use these to flip the gradient around, if you really want. A better way to do that is to go up to this free transform tool that we had over on the left side, hold that down, grab the gradient transform tool, which is F, and if I zoom out slightly, you can see that on the corner there, there's the round arrow icon. If you grab that, you can spin the gradient to be in a different direction. I'll just flip that around 180 degrees so we have dark on top. That looks fine. So let's grab our memory logo out of the library, throw it right onto there. Let's go use the gradient tool as a free transform tool and resize that. Wow. A little bit longer. Okay, a little bit less huge. Fine. Now let's try and line that up nice and neatly. We'll go down to the properties and we'll throw that at zero by zero and it's jumped way up into the corner. Why did that happen? Let's double click on it. If we highlight the things here, inside of the memory logo movie clip, we can see that the position inside the movie clip is minus 200 by 71. So let's change that back to zero by zero. I guess we weren't, or I wasn't paying attention to where they were sitting when I made them. 